So I want to begin by asking you, as a director, yeah. directing this film, do you come across any sort of stigma or stereotypes from, uh, you know, about making a pop comedy, maybe from the studio, from production, or even in marketing? Was there any sort of issues with that? A little bit. I mean, just not in terms of production. The production of the film, everyone was excited about. Everybody knew what we were making. They were just like, all right, we're going to make this movie about weed, about kids in high school. Great. You know, this drug dealer shows up in the high school once they jack his his keef, you know, his concentrated THC crystals with a gun, like in high school. That's a little bit taboo. It's a little bit edgy. But uh, they said, go ahead. We were all about it, and we made it. Um, and then in the marketing, if you could see, we, we had to kind of imply marijuana in high school. We had the smoke coming out of the, the thing. We had done two posters for Sundance, and one of them is a diploma rolled up like a huge joint. And it says, future going up in smoke, make sure it's some primo shit. You know, and then there's like some other stuff where it's like, uh, um, I forget, there was like a Scantron sheet with like filled in like a weed leaf. And the MPA monitors not only the film and rates it, but the MPA also monitors marketing materials. So you have to kind of be careful what you what you put out there. Yeah. Do you look at sort of the influences of the film? I mean, do you look at it as a pop comedy, or do you look? Were you looking at more of you know Fast Times at Ridgemont High and some of those like classic <coughs> yeah. school films that maybe didn't even have necessarily that, like Cheech and Chong or whatever? Totally. I mean, look, I, I did look at movies like Cheech and Chong and say, okay, the the plot. Uh, happens to be about weed. It's not just like a, a stoner comedy because there's stoners in it. Like the actual plot is marijuana. So like you can't take that out of what it is. So it kind of has to be something um, that that touches on those stoner movies. But I was really kind of saying, look, uh, you know, movies like Risky Business, Ferris Bueller's Day Off, Fast Times at Ridgemont High. Those are like great s stories and movies about teenage kids and what it was like to be a teenager and I want to tap into some of that stuff you know and, and just instead of them hiring prostitutes they dose the school you know but because what they're doing happens to be about marijuana you kind of have to it's labeled a, a stoner comedy and we knew that and we're happy to embrace it and all that but I just wanted to make a, a comedy a high school movie uh, first and yeah. foremost yeah. Uh, does it add a certain authenticity when you get Oscar winner Adrian Brody or Michael Chiklis who has yeah. such a broad, you know, great career? Yeah. Does it add a certain authenticity when you say to people, oh, you know, yeah, it's pop comedy, but I got Brody and I got Chiklis. And I yeah, got I mean, what do they bring to the film? Well, hopefully it makes it a little bit more than kind of just, oh, it's some, you know, guys in a film. We don't know who they are and it's this kind of silly movie. It's like, oh, there's an Academy Award winner. There's the guy who's an Emmy Award winner, Golden Globe winner. There's, there's all these, you know, great actors, Colin Hanks and... And, you know, even down to the other little roles, like Michael Vartan's in it for a day, and Yardley Smith plays Lisa Simpson, and there's there's all kinds of, of people in the movie. Curtis Armstrong, who plays Booger in Revenge sure. of the Nerds, and was in uh, all those 80s kind of teen movies, was in Risky Business. Yeah, Risky Business. Yeah. Um, you even have a Wilson brother in the film. Yeah, Andrew yeah. Wilson's in it, Michael T. Williamson, who's a really great, great actor, to be doing, like, a small role. Um, it, it elevates the movie. I mean, because they say that, you know, uh, casting is, you know, sometimes 50%. Uh, of a director's job, and I remember reading this book Cameron Crowe did, who wrote uh, Fast Times at Ridgemont High. You know, he wrote this book Conversations with Wilder about Billy Wilder, and he said that that uh, Billy Wilder had said directing was ninety percent casting. So getting that cast, we knew was just going to make the film that much better. Well, and it's such a buddy comedy at the same time, high school buddy comedy. Yeah. Matt casting Matt and Sean. Yeah. Pivotal. Can you talk about finding them? Yeah. Well, I I knew. We're going to try to cast name actors around it. You kind of have to when you're making a movie like this because it's based on foreign pre-sale numbers. That's how they sort of justify what they're going to spend on the movie. And because we got such a good cast, they gave us plenty of money to make the movie. Um, and what we were able to do is populate the film with these kind of, okay, we've got an Academy Award winner as a drug dealer. we got, you know, this guy over here as the principal. We've got great actors. Let's find two kind of relatively unknown guys who have great chemistry. And we just found that through a rigorous casting process, meeting tons of kids and kind of starting to, you know, figure out who would be good together. And, and uh, uh, you know, it's one of my, my things that I think I'm good at as a director is finding kids who I think are, are right, finding people, you know, casting, uh, who are right for the role. And I remember just kind of meeting Sean Marquette, and I just I just told the casting director, I was like, I think he's the guy, you know. Finding Matt was a little harder. I actually ended up casting him off tape because we were already in Michigan, and he was in New York. And I'd cast him off tape, actually. Were you concerned about Matt and Sean having that? Yeah, chemistry? yeah, I was, actually, because we had done a lot of mixing and matching, and it wasn't quite working out. And then I was on set, and it was kind of getting into nervous time. Yeah. And when I brought Matt out, uh, I was going to take them both to dinner. And when I picked them up, they, like, both came out, like, both wearing, like, football hats and, like, parkas, and they were, like, punching each other in the arm. And they'd been hanging out. Oh, they were on the same flight out, and they, like, were sitting next to each other. And they were already, like, best friends. And I was like, all right, this is going to be great. Awesome. 
a last question I'll ask you. Um, Psycho Ed, yeah. Adrian Brody. I mean, did you guys talk about? It? Did you know that he was going to be doing that kind of y- characterization? Y- yeah. Or did he just come on set and you're like, oh shit. Like no, no, was- we'd actually actually written a lot of that into the script. Okay, like right. we said at one point in the script, uh, his eye twitches uncontrollably. Like, and this is always a thing that like me and my friends do whenever someone's kind of like BSing or whatever and you don't really believe them, you're just kind of like this at all. <laughs> I think, and some of my friends have gotten really good at it. And so I was showing Adrian how I did it and like we wrote it into the script and he was practicing that, you know, and he showed up having practiced the eye twitch and put that into the whole thing. And, and uh, we talked about the hair beforehand and what we wanted to do and he's a guy who's like been such a shut in you know, working on his, you know, his botany projects and, like, his weed has to be, it's like his life, you know, um, that he sort of has a hairstyle that's, like, both practical for, like, scientific purposes, doesn't have to be done that often, and it's totally out of date, you know, so it's, all that stuff, like, his outfit he wears to school, if you look at the film closely, the house he lives in, it's as if, it's got this whole backstory to it that he bought this house from a woman who passed away and her son had just sold it in a fire sale, and if you look, there's pictures on the walls of, like, old like World War II pictures of an old couple and black and white photos. Like he just took all the furniture out, left the pictures on the wall, and there was one closet that this guy left his mom's, all his old negligees and stuff. So he just kind of takes <laughs> this old woman's like pur- you know purple velour robe, oh, nightgown, wow. when he's like running out to the school because he just like is going to find his his stuff that got jacked, and oh, he grabs this old old woman's outfit. So there's all this kind of reason why he is what he is. Yeah. Well, it's great. It makes the character great. It makes it a great film. Thanks and it so makes much. it makes it fun to watch two more than once. Yeah, you know, yeah. You can look at all that stuff. Exactly. Exactly.